Hello everyone, this is me, Mr. Big T. Anderson, and today we're doing a fanfiction reading. Well, it's the first one for the month, of course, and uh, for those who don't know, I decided to do uh, kind of two subjects, normally I do three. It's going to be Mass Effect and Doctor Who. Uh, so the subject's pretty wide, so I, I think there'll be enough there. I won't have too many problems. And we're going to start it off with A Lesson in Lethargy by Repu Bleh, If I cannot say the author's name at this point, we are going to have a lot of problems this month. By Rebecca Pierce. <sighs> so, also, I'm, I'm very impressed to know how these are doing. Um, uh, for not having any video, I'm kind of surprised. And I've actually had someone come to me and go, Hey, uh, you, should, you should read these on Twitch. I'm like... But what, 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 her, so, yeah, we may do something more with fan fiction. I don't know yet. We're going to see. But this is a lesson in lethargy. This is from the Doctor Who fan fiction. Yeah, can't really blame me. Uh, before some snobs get in the way, um, I. I got started with the new Doctor Who, but I also realize there is a lot of the older series that have a lot of information, so, and there's going to be a couple that pull from that, so I made sure not to have just, like, from, uh, Eccleston on, there's going to be some older ones, so no worries there, uh, we should all have something that, that is fun in Mass Effect because Anderson's choice, meh, <laughs> Anyway, Lesson in Lethargy by Rebecca Pierce. She is selfish and kind. She knows this because it's an integral part of her. Something that gets shouted her at her face constantly by students and parents and basically everyone now that she thinks about it. So this should be easy. It'd be simple for her to hate him. To charge forward into tomorrow knowing that he chose to keep a promise instead of their future, it should make the days easy, melting them into the faces of children, wide-eyed and knowing of empty hallways, of a bed that won't feel too big. Step by step, it should burn until Clara Oswald is no more and she can become what he chose to be. Nothing. Nothing and everything. She is selfish, but she knows this, and at first, maybe, she does hate me. One foot forward and she can get out of bed. Two and she can eat more than just a nibble. Uh, can maybe taste the bitterness of the tea that it scalds and hurts. It means that maybe, just maybe, she's a little more alive than she thought. As red spreads from the tip of her pen mercilessly. Honestly, Ashley, love, you can do better than this on your next exam if you put the phone down for five minutes. Three steps and suddenly the door is open and the sun is spilling in and really, she'll be alright. She can do this. She tells herself that lives come simply enough of late, and that pang of guilt is nothing, just like him. Them, she corrects herself, just like them. Four steps and the school looms above her. She's counting in her head, and it's bloody ridiculous, but when the doctor comes back, she won't have to anymore. We'll get lost, drunk, chasing after the high of her feet hitting cement or dirt or metal, a breast that are never enough, and the need to drown in helping others because she is kind. She'll be okay. Clara Oswald is going to make it out of this. Six. Six steps, and she doesn't know how long it's been since she's tried calling the TARDIS. Was it four days ago? Two? Five minutes ago? It blurs together, and she grabs the remote because those are not tears in her eyes, and her hand isn't trembling as she angrily mashes down on the buttons because there's got to be something on at this hour. Really, can't just be all these stupid replays, and she can do this. Really, she can. It's not a whimper that escapes her, not a sob, and she's not a collapsed heap on the floor, and that's not her arm throwing the control across the room as she curls in on herself. Five. She realizes then she'd taken five steps. There's a scream lodged somewhere in her throat, but she's all right. Really, she is. There are others out there who have lost entire families, but they weren't Danny, and his name is not going to drive a dagger through her again, because it's not like she's remembering him, hugging her one last time, or apologizing for the very Danny thing he did by saving that boy. She is selfish because she despairs when the boy comes through. She is kind because she hugs the child regardless. She is both because she hates that hall with such a passion. 
Somewhere down the line, between the floor in the living room and the cacophony of the school, Claire feels life tugging her along, a little boat carried by a stream she'll never control, burbling, eddying, leaving her breathless and struggling to its every whim. Of course, she'd fought from the very beginning. This leaf on the wind tried to guide her course as best she could because the doctor made her feel as if she could. She saved him enough to believe it anyways. But this... There were pieces of her missing. Or so the doctor had said, due to the choice she had made to save him. There was no arguing because she could remember going into the stream of his timeline, could recall the darkness and the suffocating everything and everyone, the faces that flew past in rapid motion, both his and any that had influenced him. And it should feel odd, this, this sudden departure from her full self. She'd come back a mere puzzle piece and yet had not yielded an inch. Six or seven, it, it doesn't matter. Those steps were going to lead somewhere, and she'd be damned if she didn't find out. Didn't drag herself out of the muck that Danny had left her in. The lies, the not quite lost, that hung heavy in the air. Eight. Days, steps, they're all bleeding into each other. She seeks not pink, but blue out of the corner of her eye now. Fingers cold as she wraps a cardigan around herself and hunches back over her desk in the quickly emptying room. She's doing fine. Nine finds her in a nice cafe, elbows on the table, and face passive as she awaits the man that walks calmly out of the blue box that no one seems to notice on the street. She doesn't know what to make of the look on his face or the way the eyes stay guarded even as he smiles at her. I found Gallifrey, he says. Ten. Ten steps has her seeing her place in the world he's created for her. Me and Danny, we are going to be fine, she hears herself say. Eleven, and she wraps her arms around the doctor, trying not to break again. Thank you for making me feel special. Clara waits, watches, listening to the echoing call of the TARDIS with what she hopes is a smile. Then, slowly, she squares her shoulders, turns, and lifts her foot. Twelve steps and home becomes a memory. Ah, you know, it's going to be one of those days. Um, luckily, I don't think I had any major faux pas in that reading. <clears throat> For some reason, I managed to hold that off. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that got me was, oftentimes, if you are able to explore and have uh, that many experiences... Uh, suddenly the world does seem a little bit strange when you get back. Uh, and I think this goes over that a little bit uh, more in-depth than some of the other stories do. And probably some of the stories that we're going to read over today. So that's why I picked it. Um, for those who don't know Claire Oswald, uh, she is from the new... Do I say new? Uh, the newer who. <laughs> uh, makes me feel bad. I haven't watched anything. Actually, I think the Claire episodes were some of the last ones I watched. I know there's a few new people on there that I haven't gotten to yet, but it happens. But anyway, uh, back to the business at hand. Uh, for those who don't know, I don't think I actually said it this time, but I'll say it now. I am not the writer. Rebecca Pierce is. I'm just schmucky duck reading this. So if you want to give the author some props, there's going to be links down below. I would suggest you click them, give the author some props. You know, really, uh, you know, there's going to be both the story page and the author page. So please give the love there. Um, and really, I mean, if you liked how I did it, put a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what uh, fan fictions you'd like me to read later. <laughs> ah. And you know what? I hope you guys all have a good one. Ta-ta for now.